In this video, we start the last part of the course on spectral theory. Our goal here is to extend the spectral theory we've seen at the very beginning of the course in Hilbert spaces to more general Banach spaces. And as we've seen in the Hilbert space case, particular emphasis will be put on compact operators for which the spectral theory is very robust. So what's the definition of a compact operator in a Banach space? It's exactly the same as what we had in a Hilbert space. A operator, bandolinear operator on the Banach space is going to be called compact when the closure of the image by T of the closed unit board of X is compact. And we're going to use the notation K of X for the space of compact linear operators uh, between X and X. Now the first thing we're going to see in Proposition 12.2 is that the quintessential example of an operator that is compact is an operator that is a limit of finite rank operator, a limit in the operator norm. And by finite rank, I mean operators which range is a finite dimensional subspace of the Banach space X. So whenever you can be approximated by operators that have finite dimensional ranges, then you have to be compact. In particular, we will see that operators that do have finite dimensional ranges are compact themselves. So let's prove this proposition 12.2 to start with. Okay, so to prove proposition 12.2, I'm first going to notice that finite rank operators are indeed compact. And the reason for that is the following. Uh, if you look at one of these finite rank operators Tn, and you look at the image of the closed unit board by Tn, and take the closure of that, uh, this is gonna be in the closure of the range of Tn. But because Tn is finite dimensional, its range is necessarily close. Finite dimensional subspaces are always close. So we have, okay, so what have we got? We've got that this set is a closed bounded set inside a finite dimensional space. And we've seen that in finite dimension, closed bounded sets are indeed compact. So just Tn dx closure is compact since it is closed and bounded since it is a closed and bounded subset of a finite dimensional boundary space. Okay, so the TNs themselves are necessarily compact. Now, Let's give ourselves an epsilon. And what we need to show to prove that T itself is compact, we really need to show that the closure of the image of the closed unit ball by T is totally bounded. Of course, it will be complete because it's a closure. Uh, it's a closed set within a Banach space. And so that will be enough because our topology is definitely metric to prove compactness. So I give myself an epsilon. And the first thing I do is that I choose an N such that uh, t minus tn in operator norm is smaller than epsilon, right? Because t is the limit of the tn in operator norm. Now, the next thing I want to do is to notice that because tn is itself compact, we have the existence of a family of vectors. So there exists a capital N and there exists a family of vectors in the unit ball of X such that the image by Tn of Bx closure is included in the union of the balls uh, of radius epsilon centered at Tn of Xj. Right. Um, these open balls, j equal 1, to capital M. That's because this set is totally bounded because it is compact. Because Tn of Bx closure is compact. Right. Now, if you give me an x in the unit ball of x, or more, no, more importantly, if you give me a z in the closure of the image by T of the unit ball of x, I can pick a x in the unit board of x such that z minus t of x is smaller than epsilon, right? because that's what it means to be in the closure. Now, putting all of these things together, what can I say 
about um, z minus txj for an appropriate j. So what I want to look at is I want to pick my j. So I want to pick j between 1 and n such that for this x that I've picked here, um, t n of x minus t n of x j is smaller than epsilon. Okay, now for that particular j, what can I say about z minus t of x j? Well, I can use triangle inequality and say this is smaller than z minus t of x plus t of x minus t n of x plus t n of x minus t n of x j plus t n of x j minus t of x j. Right, and all of these things are small. Z minus t x is smaller than epsilon because I picked my x that way. t of x minus t n of x uh, is smaller than epsilon because I've picked my n that way. T n of x minus T n of x j is smaller than epsilon because I've picked my j that way, given a fixed n, and T n of x j minus T of x j is also smaller than epsilon because it's smaller than norm of T n minus T, uh, which is smaller than epsilon because I've picked n that way. So this entire thing is smaller than four epsilon. And what have we shown here? We've shown that the closure of the unit ball um, of uh, the, the closure of the image of the unit ball bx by t is included in the union j equal 1 to n of the balls center at t x j and of radii for epsilon. So we've just proven that this set uh, here is totally bounded and of course it's complete and so it has to be compact because we're in a metric space. That concludes the proof of proposition 12.2. Okay, so finite rank operators are definitely compact, but they are compact operators that are not finite ranks. So let's have a look at some examples. So here is the first example. We look at an unconditional basis, the n, and we look at the multiplier operator, t lambda, and that's just multiply the coefficient in the basis expansion by a sequence lambda n. And now what the example is going to be assuming that lambda is in C naught, the space of sequences that tend to zero at infinity. Now we know that if lambda is in little l infinity, the space of bounded sequences T lambda is going to be bounded, that's a consequence of unconditionality of the basis. But if on top of being bounded, the, act, the coefficients actually go to zero at infinity, then the operator is going to be better than bounded, it's going to be compact. Now, how do we see that? Well, we look at the uh, projection operators, you know, Pn of x, defined as the sum, n equals zero to capital N of lambda, oh, not lambda, of x, e n star, E n. Okay, uh, and now we look at t lambda minus p n times t lambda. And we look at that at a point x. Okay, for all x in x. So what can I say about this? Um, I can say that this is equal to the sum n equal capital N plus 1 to infinity. Let's find the n of the lambda n x e n star e n. And so by unconditionality, there exists a constant c, of course, independent of capital N and independent of uh, n. That's just the unconditionality constant of the basis, such that this is controlled by c times the supremum of the coefficients, which you know, there's zero below capital N, so this is really just the supremum of the lambda N for N greater or equal to N plus one times the full sum, which is nothing but X. Okay, so we've got what? So we've got that the norm of T lambda minus PN times T lambda, 
So bounded linear operator acting on X is smaller than a constant independent of N times the supremum of the lambda N as N is greater than capital N plus one. Now that certainly goes to zero as capital N goes to infinity because my sequence lambda is in C naught. So the lambda n's do go to zero as n go to infinity. So yeah, lim soup is also zero. Okay, but what is that note telling me? It's telling me that t lambda is the limit in the operator norm of the p n t lambdas. And what is the dimension of the range of p n times t lambda? Well, p n times t lambda, any elements in that range is just a sum of the first capital N plus one ENs, a linear combination of the first capital N plus one EN. So this dimension here is uh, capital N plus one, which is certainly finite for every N. So T lambda is the limit, the uniform limit, the limit in the norm topology of P of X of a sequence of finite rank operator. So this gives us that T lambda is compact by proposition 12.2. Okay, so that's the quintessential example of a compact operator. And you should think of diagonal operator with bounded entries acting on an unconditional basis. That's the quintessential example. That's diagonal matrix. It's the simplest example of a bounded operator. And if this sequence on the diagonal happens to be not just an infinity, but C naught, then you get the quintessential example of a compact operator. But not every compact operator arises in this way necessarily. So let's have a look at another example. So we've seen an example using the theory of bases. Here is an example using the theory of weak solutions of PDE. And let's keep it to uh, L2 for now. Um, but this could also work in LP. Now, if you look at the weak solution of the equation minus u second plus u equal f for an f in L2, uh, and you look at the unique solution, be the unique weak solution of this equation in L2 of 0, 1, Right, we've seen that there's a unique element of H1 of 0, 1, 6 to lax Graham theorem that is going to satisfy this equation weakly. Uh, and we can write U as a operator T applied to F. Now we've seen uh, in particular through the assignment and the first assignment one and the first part of the course that two things happen. So this map T is a bounded linear map on L2. And we've also seen that it is compact uh, by subadef embedding. Because really it maps L2 into the subspace H1 and the injection of uh, H1 into L2 in one dimension is compact. And T, so T is really the composition of a bounded linear operator with this injection i, and this injection i is compact. Now we could extend that to LP by proving Sobolev embedding in LP spaces. We could extend that to higher dimension, but then there's an interaction between the dimension and the values of P. But we won't do that here, but keep that in mind that these sort of operators that you get a solution of PDE, thanks to the compactness of certain Sobolev embedding, tend to give compact operator. And notice that the idea here is that this operator T uh, is really minus second derivative plus identity minus one. All right, so we are giving a meaning to this uh, inverse and then applying this inverse to F gives us the solution. So operators that arise like that, inverses of differential operator in appropriate spaces are other good examples of compact operators. So we've seen some good examples of compact operators, and we have seen that these operators typically arise as limits in the uniform topology, in the topology of B of X uh, of finite rank operators. And you can ask yourself the question, is that the only way I can get a compact operator? Are all compact operators limits of finite rank operators in the norm topology of B of X? 
And the answer is no in general, but it took a long time before people constructed a Banach space in which this fails. Uh, and this turns out to be true, at least in any Banach space that has a basis. So most Banach spaces you will meet in practice, they do have a basis, maybe not unconditional, but some basis. And as soon as you have a basis, then this uh, construction that we did in uh, proving that this multiplier with a C0 sequence on an unconditional basis is compact, well, this construction will always work. So any operator that is compact will be approximated by those finite rank operator where you just truncate the action of t of x on the first n plus one element of the basis. Right, so in a space with a basis, compact operators are only limits of finite rank operators. So let's prove this proposition 12.5. Okay, so to prove this is not too hard, we just look at t minus p n t and in the norm of p of x, and we want to show that this goes to zero as n goes to infinity. This is by definition the supremum for x in the unit ball of x of t of x minus p n of t of x. And that is nothing but the supremum for y in the image of the unit ball by t of y minus pn of y not in x. Now, for any y in x for that matter, y minus pn y does go to zero. Well, because en is a basis. Right, so pn, the partial sum projections do converge, pn of y does converge to y. Okay, but now T of Bx closure is compact and so in particular it's totally bounded and so when we look at the supremum for y in T Bx closure of y minus p and y, uh, I have every single element for every single choice of y this goes to zero and then I'm taking the supremum over a compact set using say total boundedness, I get that this has to go to zero, as n goes to infinity. And therefore we've proven that t minus p and t in the b of x norm does go to zero. And that concludes this proof. So as soon as you have a basis, all compact operators are limit of finite rank operators.